All right. <coughs> Hello, everyone. We are going to be looking at the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. We'll use um, a sum and a difference formula. We'll do one with sine and one with cosine, and one with um, radians or one degrees. You kind of see all three pieces coming into play. So, for the first one, we're looking at sine of 255. And if I try to just go solve this right away, if I try to go draw my triangle, right? Well, 255, that would be somewhere in the third quadrant. However, the reference angle, 255 minus 180, oh, can't see that, 255 minus 180, that'd be 5, 75 degrees. And well, <coughs> we don't know the reference, or the ratios for a 75 degree angle, so we can't do it here. So instead, we are going to have to use our sum and difference formulas, alright? So I know that my angles I can use are 30, 45, 60, and 90, all right? And I need to find some combination of these to get me to be 255. Now, I'm gonna be a little cautious with 90. The only reason is, is if I did 90 plus 60, for example, that would be 150. That would have a reference angle of, one, of 30 degrees, and I could just solve that anyways. So usually if I'm doing just 90 plus something, it usually doesn't work out, or I could have just done it without using the sum and difference formula. So I'm probably not going to use that very often, but it might come up. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding up some angles trying to get me to 255. So um, I'm trying to look for, I know I need a reference angle 75, so I'm just going to start off with 60 plus 60 plus 60. That's going to get me to 180, and now i got to get that 75. If I added another 60, so this right here is 180. If I added another 60, that would get me 240. And then that would put me at just 15. I would need a 15 degree angle, which doesn't work. I don't know the 15 degree angle, so I don't want to add another 60. So instead I'm going to keep my 30. 60 plus 60 plus 60. Plus, instead of 60, let me add a 30. That puts me at 210. And then 210 to 255, I would have to add a 45 degree angle. Now, if I add all those together, that does equal 255, which is a good sign. Okay. <coughs> the only thing is, my formula for the sum of difference formula, there's only one, you can only add two angles together, or subtract two angles. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five angles, and you need only two. So I'm going to start combining them. And you're allowed to combine them as long as you still know what that would be. So, for example, if I combine these 60 and 60, that would be 120. I could find the ratio for 120. That has a reference angle of 60, so I'm good there. So that still works. So I'm going to go ahead and add that other 60 in as well. That gets me to 180. Again, I know what 180 is. It's just um, that I, it's quadrantal. I'd use uh, x and y. It's 0 and 1 to help me out here. But I could still do it. Um, but I still would have 180 plus 30 plus 45, which doesn't work. And I definitely don't want to add these two together. That would be 75, um, and that wouldn't help me. So I'm going to add these two together, 210 plus 45. All right. Nice thing is, 210 works. All right. um, I will have a 30 degree reference angle, and 45 has a 45 degree reference angle. So I'm good. So I'm going to take this sign of 225, or 255, And I just broke it up as sine of 210 plus 45. Right. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply that sum and difference formula that we have on our formula sheet. So sine with a positive, that becomes sine of the first angle, cosine of the second, plus sine of the second, cosine of the first. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and start kind of evaluating these. So sine of 210, well, in order to do that I got to draw my angle. So 210 puts me here.
So this is 210, which means when I draw my reference angle, it's a 30 degree reference angle. Oh, it's really tight. But 30 degrees, that means the opposite side is 1, the adjacent side is root 3, hypotenuse is 2. And obviously, don't forget about your negatives. So this is a 210 degree. Go ahead and make my 45 degree also. So the first quadrant, so 1, 1, root 2. So now sine of 210, that's going to be this triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, negative 1 over 2. Cosine of 45, well that is 1 over root 2. Plus... Sine of 45, I'm back to the same triangle. Sine of 45 is also 1 over root 2. And cosine of 210 is going to be negative root 3 over 2. Now, if I multiply, well, when I multiply fractions, I multiply the numerators together, and I multiply the denominators together. So this would be negative 1 over 2 root 2, plus negative root 3 over 2 root 2. If they have the same denominator, I can combine them. So this would be negative 1 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. Remember, you can only combine the numerators. Like you only, please, if the roots are the same, so negative 1 and root 3, not the same, can't add them together. Right. So my final answer is sine of 255 is equal to negative 1 minus root 3 all over 2 root 2. That is a sine, or a, a sum formula for sine in degrees. Alright, we're going to go ahead and look at our next video, which is going to be a cosine. Cosine of pi over 12. So right off the bat, we know that we don't have one of our regular radian measures. Our radian measures are pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, and pi over 2. So again, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to kind of come up with those angle measures again. So like I said, my ones I know are pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Now, I am referring to a pi over 12 here. So in order to add and subtract things nicely, there are fractions, I need to have common denominators. So it's going to be easier just to get everything to have that common denominator right now. All right. So for this to be a common denominator, I've got to multiply it by 2 over 2. So that's going to be 2 pi over 12. Pi over 4, I'm going to need to multiply it by 3 over 3. That gives me 3 pi over 12. This is 4 over 4, which is going to be 4 pi over 12. And this is 6 over 6, so 6 pi over 12. All right. And now I'm trying to see, hey, do any of these add or subtract to be pi over 12? And the nice thing is it being just 1 pi over 12, well, if my smallest one is 2 pi over 12, I know I'm going to have to subtract some things. Um, so what am I going to have to subtract? Well, I'm going to go ahead and set, do 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. Because, like I said, 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. When you're subtracting fractions, as long as you have the common denominator, you subtract the numerator, so that's just pi over 12, which is what I want. So I'm going to say this is cosine of 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12. Nice thing is once I get that subtraction down, I could just convert them back to what I had before. So cosine 3 pi over 12 is just pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Right. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the cosine difference formula. And you got to be careful with cosine. So it's cosine of the first one, pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6. However, it switches signs, so it's plus sine of the first, sine of the second. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do, but now what I do, I have my two angles, i got to draw their triangles. So, 
pi over 4, well, pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle. So that's 1, 1, root 2. Alright, and then, what is it, pi over 4? Pi over 6. Pi over 6 is going to be 1, root 3, and 2. So now cosine pi over 4, hey, that's just 1 over root 2. Cosine of pi over 6, root 3 over 2. Plus sine of pi over 4, 1 over root 2. Sine of pi over 6, 1 over 2. This multiplies out and it becomes root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Have the same denominator, so I can combine them. Root 3 plus 1 all over 2 root 2. So my final answer is cosine of pi over 12 is equal to root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Right. And that is the sum and difference formula for sine and cosine in both radians and degrees.